Hey guys, welcome back. And today I got a very pleasant surprise because they are still hiring for jobs right now here in New York City at least. But how many roles? I'm not sure, but at least I got two and I've been up having the options to actually fill one of them. But I want to share with you guys the actual email that I received and how I got this far as far as within New York City. Now, this is a strictly government city job all right and these this is the process and in my channel this is the type of stuff that i go through to educate you guys on how i proceed to go through this uh, so you don't have to struggle and understand what it takes to get to this point right so one thing that i want to do right now is this i uh, first i'm going to show you guys uh my channel my goodness it's been over two years now so uh if you guys can hit that comment you know like and subscribe and all that youtube stuff that you guys can do for me because i enjoy the engagement hey i appreciate it so let's get into it right now this is it this is the email that i received this morning at four at eight o'clock this morning four hours ago your name among the amongst the others right has been provided by new york city, city department of citywide administrative services that's dcas that's this guy right up here all right and i'll explain that how this all works in a little bit to the Office of Technology and Innovation, which is OTI. That's like the whole big cyber command. If you haven't looked that up, look up New York City OTI and you see a whole bunch of pictures of that. As an applicant to the Cybersecurity Analyst Open Competitive Exam 5061. That's right here, guys. 5061, if you see that. OTI is seeking to fill position and advance the establishment of the list. Well, you can see here it says exam status, a waiting list. Well, that's exactly what that means it hasn't been populated yet but they're actually polling people who took this exam and by saying taking this exam it's very time sensitive this exam is not open all year round it's very specific you have to follow the dates and then you have to apply you have to pay your fee i think it was like 65 or 85 or something like that it's not cheap all right uh, and there's no guarantee that's for sure now, selected candidates will not be appointed as probable permanents. Now, what this actually means is that you will not be a permanent employee until the, the list is official, meaning you see here, it still says a waiting list. When you're actually a permanent employee, that tells you that uh, you're, you're kind of in the system and then you, uh, that doesn't mean that you're not part of the union. It, it has everything. It's just that you're still provisional and when you're provisional they can just kind of fire you that's the downside to all that so but when you're permanent it becomes a lot more challenging it means you have to mess up really bad in order to get let go all right so that's the simplest terms i can explain that there are temporary appointments in advance of the establishment of the list probably uh, permanent appointments uh, will be made once the list is established to be appointed as a probable permanent you must be reached on the list at that time. So that pretty much means that once the official list comes out and and they pull you to fill this position, then you're pretty much set, right? It's golden at that point. Uh, but it doesn't mean that they can't pull you even though they're interviewing and they're going through this process right now. So it gets a little confusing, but at the same time, I've done this a good handful of times before and I kind of got the hang of it and I kind of understand what the hell they're trying to do at this point so I'm not phased by it anymore but if you're confused and you're in New York City or you're you're wanting to come to New York City and you want to try and get these type of jobs hey reach out to me I'll help you out as best as I can all right so now please see current job description attached that's going to be the fun part guys if you are interested in being considered for a temporary appointed in advance of the establishment of the list, meaning you want to be considered for this role before the list actually comes out, right? But you have to be on the higher end of the list, like lower number, you know, closer from one to 100 and not like 500 or 600 because I am on the list for other civil service exams and I'm like number 400, 500. And I was like, it'll take forever before I get called, right? For these positions or other upcoming cybersecurity analysts, opportunities please e uh, reply to this email with your resume by the close of business monday may 19th 2025 so there's four more days before that actually happens so let's go over what the job description so they sent over two job description first ring uh, first things first salary fifty nine thousand 
$314 slash $69,781. I'm not too sure why they put it like this for this first part. But the second part, the highest range of this is $80,000. Now, I just want to share that both job descriptions are in the same price range, but two different roles, right? This one is cybersecurity analyst level one threat analyst. And this is the same title uh, because that's what we apply for in the exam. But this one is a cyber policy analyst. All right. So let's go over some of the details here. For the SOC analyst one threat analyst, which seems to be a little bit more hands-on, more technical. Uh, this one is probably going to be a little bit more on the documentation side. You know, I'm just saying, uh, job, the job description looks a little shorter, compressed, opposed to the threat analyst where he has a lot more things going on over here. So let's look at the job. You know what? Before we look at the job description, let's look at the preferred skills, excellent verbal and communication skills, understanding cybersecurity fundamentals. OK, I'm not going to go through the details of each one, but I'm looking for key items right now. Uh, strong fun, uh, foundation IT knowledge. Hey, I've said that many times over in the past. Uh, critical thinking and problem solving. Oh, that's great. Uh, ability to accurately, completely source all data used intelligence. And uh, let's see, you need to have some kind of scripting language. All right, Python, PowerShell, uh, operating system knowledge, Windows, Linux, etc. Uh, some familiarity with SIM, uh, EDR, IPS, IDS. Uh, and, and, you know, guess what? Guess what they're saying here, or guess what they're not saying here. You don't need to have X amount of certifications and you don't need to have X amount of college credit or degree, right? Preferred is this. It doesn't say that you need to have graduated from college. So that's a plus for some of you guys, right? And also not having certifications. It's also another plus. Maybe you can actually get in here, right? Obtain your certifications while you're working here. So that way, OTI can actually pay for your certification, pay for your training, pay for all your knowledge uh, as you're growing with uh, the organization, at, with the city agency, OTI. So let's look at a job description right now and see what they're asking for. Char uh, characterize and analyze network traffic to identify ano uh, anom anomalous uh, activity and a potential threat to network resources. All right. I'm just going to skim through all this. There's no reason for me to read each one. And you guys can probably just screenshot this and you'll see exactly what the hell is it that they were asking for. Let's randomly pick one right here. Receive and analyze network alerts from various sources with the enterprise uh, determine possible causes of such alerts. So here's what I would do if I was any individual entertaining or wanting to entertain this is that go to your preferred skills, look all this up, what they're saying here and dive deep into it, right? Especially on the technical side, the EDR, the SIM, and the IPS, IDS, that's the easy part. Uh, knowledge of Windows and Linux, if you know that, that's great. And then also scripting language, I'm pretty sure it's not like you need to know like 100% and it won't be like 100% or even 50% of your job responsibility, but it's preferred. Again, guys, this is preferred. This is not required. This is not required, but your responsibilities on the day-to-day -day would be this. These would be required. Whether it happens every day consistently or not, that's a different story. But they want to kind of give you an idea of what happens on a day to day, right? Your your daily task would be this for this threat analyst. And of course, we can come back and visit the cyber policy analyst. It's a little bit dumbed down, I think. It, it's not as crazy. So let's look into the preferred skills here. Uh, excellent organizational, and verbal, and written communication skills. Hey, see, that's the document part, uh, documentation part, uh, verbal and written communication skills. Experience supporting development analysis of cybersecurity policy standards and directives. So this is a more junior role, but again, this is on the policy GRC kind of side of the house, and this would be something that would not be as technical because look, it doesn't say you need to know SIM and EDR and and Windows and Linux and things like that. But it does mention a few items here, but you probably won't even be like the technical resource for it. You just have to understand how it all works. And of course, NIST framework, because it's for the government agency, risk management framework, all those different frameworks, all those GRC stuff that this role would actually fulfill. So two rows, same title that they're looking to, to do. And I just wanted to share that with you guys because... I thought this was a, a, you know, it's interesting, right? I, I went through the motions, but 
again, this is not something that I would be doing, uh, you know, as far as taking on this role because it's a little too junior for me. But I just decided to take the exam and uh, and you know share that experience with you guys. I actually think I believe I did that. Uh, I had one of my videos. I actually ran through the whole process of doing that. Uh, I'll dig it back up and I'll. I'll put it in the description so you guys can see how that worked out. All right. I want to thank you guys for being here. Please remember to hit that like, comment, subscribe. And I, I appreciate you guys buying me coffee and, you know, and that engagement that we still have while we're talking, you know, on Zoom or whatever. And that's it. Thank you. And I'll see you guys again really soon. Take care.